SpaceX is awaiting final regulatory approval from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration and the Fish and Wildlife Service for the Starship's second integrated flight test. According to CEO Elon Musk, Starship 25 and Booster 9 are ready for flight pending government approval, but recent events at the Starbase suggest otherwise. On Thursday, October 5, teams at Starbase de-stacked Ship 25 from Booster 9 with the help of the launch tower arms. A day later, scaffolding was erected on the orbital launch mount, signaling that the teams were planning to work on Booster 9. Workers have been working on the outside and inside of the booster throughout the past week, especially on the aft section. It's currently unclear what exactly they are working on, but it can be concluded that Booster 9 needs some minor modifications and upgrades before it is ready for liftoff. The hot stage ring on top of the booster was removed on Monday, October 9. It was the second time the ring was removed from the booster after its installation in August. The last time the ring was removed was on September 21. After removing the hot stage ring in September, a platform was constructed out to the booster from the Starship's quick disconnect arm, allowing personnel to access the top of the booster. The top of the booster forward dome houses grid fin actuators, avionics, and associated components. The removal of the hot stage ring will allow teams to access the top of the booster and make any necessary hardware fixes. Workers have yet to begin work on the booster's forward dome after the hot stage ring was removed last week. Perhaps they intend to finish the work on the aft section before beginning the work on the forward dome. Altogether, the de-stacking of Ship 25, the removal of the hot staging ring, and the ongoing work on Booster 9 suggest that the vehicle is not yet completely ready for the second integrated flight test. Let's hope all the remaining work will be completed by the time SpaceX receives the FAA launch license. While Ship 25 and Booster 9 await launch, Starship 26 has resumed its pre-launch tests on suborbital launch pad B. On Monday, October 9, the ship underwent its third cryogenic proof test. The liquid oxygen tank of the ship was partially filled during the test, and venting was observed from the vehicle for several minutes. The header tanks, which hold the fuel and oxidizers for landing maneuvers, were also loaded with liquid nitrogen during the test. The third cryo test of Ship 26 lasted more than two and a half hours from start to finish. Apart from ensuring the reliability of the plumbing, these types of cryo-proof tests provide engineers with the valuable data they need to determine if the ship can endure various kinds of stresses during flight and whether the structure has any leaks. Ship 26's first two cryo-proof tests happened in February. The ship then returned to the production site for engine installation. After arriving at suborbital Pad B in early September, teams spent several days working on Ship 26, making necessary upgrades before the next round of tests. The third cryo-proof test was most likely performed to validate the upgrades the ship received over the past few weeks. If they have gathered enough data during the third test, SpaceX will proceed to ship 26's static fire tests, most likely a full six-engine static fire. As you may have noticed, ship 26 differs significantly from earlier Starship prototypes in a number of ways. Please check out my previous video to find out what those design modifications are and why SpaceX implemented those changes on ship 26. Link in the description. Work continues on Ship 28 near the Rocket Garden to prepare it for static fire tests. Starship 29, which had recently completed three cryogenic proof tests at the Massey's test site, was rolled back to the production site on early Friday morning. The ship is now parked at the Rocket Garden. Once engine installation is complete, the ship will be ready for static fire tests. Starship 30, which was fully stacked in August, was repositioned inside the high bay on October 9 to begin aft flaps installation. The ship will be ready for cryo-proof testing at Massey's after the aft flaps are installed, the wiring and piping are in place, and the remaining thermal protection system tiles are installed. Ship 30's successor, Ship 31, was fully stacked on October 3. With the stacking operations of Starship 31 completed, teams began stacking the next ship in line, Starship 32. The nose cone and payload bay section of Ship 32 were moved into the high bay on Wednesday morning. A few hours later, the nose cone was lifted and stacked atop the payload bay section, marking the beginning of Ship 32's stacking operations. The remaining ring sections will be stacked in the coming days and weeks. Super Heavy Booster 11 was rolled out to the Massey's test site on Thursday, October 12. The cryo-proof test campaign of Booster 11 will begin in the coming days. Super Heavy Booster 10, which has already completed four cryo-proof tests, and the fully stacked Booster 12, are currently inside the Mega Bay. Super Heavy Booster 13 is being stacked next to them. Its fully stacked oxygen tank section recently received the methane downcomer. 
It's the long stainless steel tube that runs from the upper methane tank through the center of the lower oxygen tank, allowing liquid methane to reach the booster engines. Unfavorable weather has hindered operations at Starbase during the last week. Let us hope that work will resume at its normal pace and that we will see more testing in the coming days. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. NASA launched the Interplanetary Asteroid Mission, Psyche, aboard a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket from Kennedy Space Center Pad 39A on Friday, October 13. The launch was the eighth flight of the Falcon Heavy and the first devoted to NASA. Just under two and a half minutes into the launch, the rocket's side boosters cut off their engines, separated from the central core stage, and eventually touched down at SpaceX's landing zones 1 and 2, several kilometers downrange of Pad 39A. About four minutes after liftoff, the rocket's center core stage shut down its engines and separated from the upper stage. Rather than attempting to land the core booster on one of SpaceX's autonomous drone ships, it was expended into the Atlantic Ocean because all of its fuel was allotted to ensure Psyche's nominal trajectory. 62 minutes after launch, the Psyche spacecraft was deployed from the Falcon Heavy's upper stage to begin its deep space mission. The Psyche mission is a journey to a unique metal-rich asteroid with the same name, located in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. The 279-kilometer white asteroid Psyche, discovered in 1852, is considered one of the most fascinating objects in the main asteroid belt, and scientists have only been able to study it at a distance. Scientists think the asteroid may consist of significant amounts of metal from the core of a planetesimal, a building block of a rocky planet that never formed. Psyche may have collided with other large bodies and lost its outer rocky shell during its early formation. Because we cannot drill a hole to Earth's metal core, visiting Psyche could provide a one-of-a-kind glimpse into the history of violent collisions and the accumulation of matter that created planets like our own. Now that the spacecraft has been separated from Falcon Heavy's upper stage, mission controllers will begin reconfiguring the spacecraft into its planned operating mode, including a commissioning phase to ensure that all hardware and software are operating as expected. About five months after launch, the spacecraft thrusters will fire to begin the journey to the asteroid. Psyche's efficient solar electric propulsion system, also known as hull thrusters, works by accelerating and expelling ions of xenon gas, creating a thrust that will gently propel Psyche through space. The spacecraft's large solar arrays will provide the power source for the spacecraft's thrusters. If all goes as planned, after traveling an estimated 3.5 billion kilometers, the Psyche spacecraft will arrive at the asteroid in July 2029. It will orbit the asteroid for nearly two years, taking images, mapping the surface, and collecting data to determine Psyche's composition. The spacecraft is equipped with four scientific instruments to study the unique planetary body. A magnetometer will look for evidence of an ancient magnetic field at the asteroid Psyche. A residual magnetic field would be strong evidence that the asteroid formed from a planetary body's core. The gamma ray and neutron spectrometers on the spacecraft will aid scientists in determining the chemical elements that make up the asteroid and better understanding how it evolved. The multispectral imager will offer data on Psyche's mineral composition as well as its geography. By analyzing the X-band radio waves the spacecraft communicates with, scientists can measure how Psyche affects the spacecraft's orbit. From that information, they can determine the body's rotation, mass, and gravity field, providing additional clues about the composition and structure of the asteroid's interior. The Psyche spacecraft will also test an experimental laser communication technology called Deep Space Optical Communications. The instrument is expected to improve spacecraft communications performance and efficiency by 10 to 100 times over existing methods. Psyche is the 14th mission selected as part of the Discovery Program, a series of solar system exploration missions funded by NASA through its Planetary Missions Program Office. Please check the link in the description for more information about the Psyche mission. A radiator on the Russian segment of the International Space Station started leaking coolant on October 9, the third such incident involving Russian hardware at the station in less than a year. The NACA module, also known as the Multipurpose Laboratory Module, was installed on the station in July 2021. NASA said in a statement that flight controllers noticed toxic ammonia flakes coming from one of two radiators on the NACA at around 1 p.m. Eastern on October 9. It was unclear how much coolant leaked from the radiator and how long it did so. According to the Russian space agency, Roscosmos, the leak was with a backup radiator on NACA. The main thermal control system is working properly, providing complete cooling to the module without impacting the crew or space station operations. The NACA incident is the third time in less than a year that Russian hardware at the ISS has experienced a coolant leak. 
In December, the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft docked at the space station lost coolant due to a leak, forcing Roscosmos to replace that spacecraft with an uncrewed Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft. That decision kept the crew that launched to the station on the Soyuz MS-22 in space for an extra six months, returning on September 27 aboard the MS-23 capsule. An uncrewed Progress MS-21 cargo spacecraft launched in October 2022 also had a coolant leak in February, just before the spacecraft was set to undock from the station. As per investigations led by NASA and Roscosmos, both leaks were caused by micro-meteoroids or orbital debris impacts. Because of the NACA module leak, planned spacewalks by the U.S. astronauts on October 12 and 20 have been postponed, with no new dates set. Teams on the ground will continue to investigate the cause of the leak, and further information will be released in the following days. NASA scientists revealed the sample collected by the OSIRIS-REx mission from near-Earth asteroid Bennu for the first time on Wednesday, October 11. NASA launched the OSIRIS-REx mission in September 2016, and after a two-year-long journey, in August 2018, the spacecraft rendezvoused with the asteroid Bennu, a 500-meter-wide carbon-rich asteroid composed mainly of silicate and nickel iron. For the next two years, the spacecraft surveyed and mapped the surface of the 4.5 billion year old asteroid and selected a location to perform the touch and go sample collection maneuver. On 20 October 2020, OSIRIS REx descended to the asteroid's surface, collected material, and stowed it in the spacecraft sample return capsule. NASA officials said the spacecraft has collected about 250 grams of asteroid stuff, far exceeding the mission requirement of 60 grams. In May 2021, the spacecraft left Bennu's orbit and began a 1.9 billion kilometer return trip to Earth. On September 24, the OSIRIS-REx sample return capsule re-entered Earth's atmosphere and landed in the Utah desert, capping off a seven-year, 5.8 billion kilometer journey through the solar system. NASA teams then collected the sample return capsule and transported it to an environmentally clean laboratory at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Over the past two weeks, the science team studied some of the rocks and dust using a scanning electron microscope and infrared measurements, and performed chemical element analysis. Researchers even reconstructed one of the grains in 3D, using an X-ray computed tomography technique to reveal its composition. The initial studies of the pristine asteroid material revealed that Bennu is abundant in water and carbon-containing chemicals. The sample is nearly 5% carbon by weight, making it one of the highest concentrations of carbon to be studied in an asteroid. The analysis also revealed sulfide and iron oxide minerals, critical elements for planetary evolution and biology. The team also shared detailed images of the particles, revealing the water-bearing clay minerals. Their presence could help solve how Earth became a water planet. Asteroids similar to Bennu may have crashed into Earth, filling our oceans. According to NASA, the science teams are so excited to detect water, organic matter, and a wealth of carbon in the samples from Bennu, which are essential elements for all life. With the initial sample examination complete, the sample will now undergo years of careful analysis, which researchers expect to yield a wealth of information about Bennu and other asteroids like it. NASA plans to share the material with more than 200 collaborators across the globe for a wide variety of investigations. Ultimately, Bennu samples will help us better understand how the early solar system formed and the origin of organics and water that led to life on Earth. Please check out my previous video for more detailed information about the OSIRIS-REx mission. Link in the description. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.